So, yesterday I received a cheeky little care package from Sony, and it is a box of their new creator mics. And to be honest with you, Sony mics ain't actually that well known. A lot of people don't even know that Sony even do mics, and they're wireless and they're pretty cool. So, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for us to, you know, take a little look, have a little listen to these mics, and see where they could potentially benefit us as creators. So, let's take a little look inside the box. Bosh. I hope you're all sweet. So I'm gonna be going over all three of these microphones, the B10, the G1, and the W2BT, and show you how we can utilize them in different scenarios, and which ones are gonna be better for our different shooting situations. Sony have sponsored this video, so I will be giving away one of these mics over on Instagram. So first up, let's go over the ECM B10. Now this is probably the most advanced microphone out of the three. Now, first of all, you'll notice that we've got these little connectors at the bottom of the cold shoe mount. That is because this microphone and the other microphones in this roster actually clip directly onto the top of your Sony microphone and connect to the camera through them connectors, which means we don't need a battery and we don't need a cable from our microphone into our 3.5 mil jack. We actually receive our audio signal through these connectors on the bottom, which makes this microphone batteryless and wireless. The amount of times I've taken out microphones and the batteries run out or the microphone wasn't plugged in properly, and this just completely solves that issue if you shoot on a Sony camera, which is perfect, and I'm pretty sure most people will vouch for that as well. So one of the good things about the B10 is the amount of control that we have on the back of this microphone. We've got our digital and analog signal, we've got our different filters, so typically I'd shoot with filter off because I like to just capture the raw natural sound that I'm actually recording, but we've got a low cut filter here, and we've got a noise cancelling filter, so we'll be testing those out in a little bit. Also, we've got our level wheel here, so we can obviously change our levels on the microphone that are going directly into the camera, so we've got a nice good amount of control when it comes to our audio levels. So we've actually got these hard stops when it comes to our audio levels going into our camera. Also, at the top here, we've got our different directional mic pickups. So we've got directional at the top. Directional basically means that everything in front of the microphone, like a shotgun mic, is gonna be picked up and it's gonna cancel out all of the different audio from the side and behind the microphone. We've got a unidirectional, which essentially picks up everything in front of the mic and everything to the sides, but doesn't pick up anything behind. And then we've got our unidirectional. Unidirectional basically just picks up everything all around the mic. We've also got auto and manual levels. Now, most people are gonna be wanting to shoot on manual levels. Auto is really good for those of you that just wanna chuck on the microphone, hit auto and let the mic and the camera do all the work for you. But if you want their manual controls, you've got them there. So this microphone is perfect for those of you that really want that high level, high control audio levels going into your camera. And there's a nice little shock mount in there as well. So it's actually got that internal shock mount and we'll be testing that out as well, just to see how this sounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna chuck this on my Sony A7S and see how this thing performs compared to my MKE Sennheiser microphone that I've got in my studio, because I think we're gonna be pleasantly surprised at how well this thing actually works. So let's stick it on directional. We'll stick our attenuation at zero dB and our audio levels are gonna be at five. So let's have a little look and see how it sounds. Right, so here we are shooting on the ECM B10. Well, we're actually shooting on the A7, but we're recording the audio through the B10 and it's at the exact same distance as my studio microphone. So right now we're listening to my studio mic, which is pointed right there. And right now we're back on the B10. So this should give you a good example of how the B10 sounds compared to my really expensive, really big studio microphone. So let's take this thing outside and actually see how it does in you know a practical environment, mate, because we're not always just in a studio with like sound blankets and that away. So let's see how this thing actually sounds outside. Let's go. Right, so we're out here in Epping Forest in the middle of this beautiful forest. Can hear a motorbike in the background, but we are now shooting on the ECM B10. I've currently got it set to directional and all of our filters are off. So this is literally the raw sound that you can hear out of this B10 microphone. So small, so light. I'm gonna give it a little shake so you can, you know, kind of get an idea for how them like shock absorbers work. Got a bit of wind coming. 
I've obviously got the wind muff on. This mic sounds absolutely banging. It's definitely the best out of the three, but it is obviously the most expensive and the largest. So this is obviously a good example to show the quality of the microphone, but it doesn't really show off the noise cancelling and you know the low cut filter. So I think we're gonna have to go somewhere a little bit more busy than Epping Forest. Let's go somewhere a bit more busy. Yeah, yeah. That's a bit better. We've got a lot going on here. So the B10, we're currently in the directional mode. So you should only be hearing things directly in front of the camera. But I think more importantly, let's try out this low cut filter, which obviously cuts out all of them low noises. So all of them hums of cars and all of them dark, dirty, low sounds. So let's try the low cut filter. And then I think the one that's gonna be really interesting is that noise cancelling filter. So let's go and set the camera up, turn on them filters. This is with no filter on at all, but now we're gonna click over to our low cut filter. Right, so we are now on our low cut filter. You should hear them low hums of the cars and the engines should have hopefully kind of disappeared now. We'll have a little listen and see what we think, but that is the low cut filter. We're still on directional. Lot of cars, lot going on here. So hopefully this sounds a bit nicer. And finally, this is our noise cancelling filter. So typically noise cancelling will just cancel out all of that background noise. Obviously we've got a lot of passing cars, a lot of people going past. There's a bit of wind as well. And we're still on that directional mode. So, how does my voice sound with that noise cancelling filter on? Hopefully it sounds good. You lot are gonna hear it at the same time as me. It's so nice to have like different filters on this mic. It's so customizable and it's so easy to use. There's a lot of buses going past now, so let's listen. How does that sound? Does it sound like it's all cut out? Let's have a listen. Right, I'm literally gonna rig you to a tree. I hope you enjoy this, because uh, this is gonna be a bit of a funky one. I've never actually rigged my camera to a tree before, so you know, learning new things every single day on this channel. So this is the directional part of the B10. So it should only be hearing things directly in front of the camera. So as I go round to the side of the camera, it should start to cut out my voice as I'm bang center on the side of the camera. And as I go round to the back of the camera, I'm right around the back right now, you shouldn't be able to hear my voice very well at all. Now we're on the unidirectional, so we should be able to hear my voice very nice and clear from the front. And now, directly from the side, but we shouldn't be able to hear my voice now at the back. Now we are on omnidirectional, so this microphone will be able to pick up everything all around. So you should actually be able to hear a lot of the ambient sound here. Birds, cars, me. And if I walk all the way around the back of this microphone, you should be able to hear my voice pretty clearly all the way around. That's pretty handy. So that is the Sony ECM B10 uh, in full action and full force, mate. But next up, we have this little pocket rocket. This is the ECM G1, and this is the very smallest microphone that Sony do. What a little pocket rocket beast of a little mic, mate. Small, mighty, no batteries, no cables, if you're on a Sony camera does have a mic output, which is really nice because you can actually just plug this mic into any other camera and use it as a normal microphone. Or you can just plug it on top of your Sony camera using that connector, no battery needed, no cables needed, direct digital signal straight into your camera. Nice little shock mount involved. You can already see where this is going, can't you? This little thing is a plug and play little nipper. This thing is absolutely perfect for content creators, people who wanna make vlogs, people who just want that run and gun, quick, high quality audio without all of the manual controls. You can't even manually control the audio levels when you plug this on top of your Sony camera. All of the audio levels are done in the mic and on the camera amps. So let's get the G1 on the A7S and see how this thing sounds. And we can, you know, compare it to the B10. Completely auto when it comes to the levels on this mic. So it is the exact same distance from my studio microphone. So they're both there. We're gonna listen to the G1 and then we're gonna go back to the studio mic. Then the G1 again and you know, have a little mooch about. But as always mate, studio ain't no good. We need to take this thing out into nature. Let's get a little wind muff on it, see how it performs. So let's go outside mate. Have you heard about this clock? Apparently it's a bit famous than that. So this microphone doesn't have any batteries, no cables. It's absolutely tiny. Let me give it a little, little wiggle for you so you can actually see how that shock absorber works. So for those of you that are just going to be like run and gun, you don't want any of that setup time, you don't want to be having manual settings, this microphone is completely automatic. So I literally haven't done anything. I've just plugged the mic in. 
and this is how it sounds. So it'd be interesting to see how it actually does directionally. Obviously, we've got a load of noise going on. It's actually quite windy today. Obviously got the wind muff on. It's pretty much essential outside, so I recommend anyone using a wind muff on any microphone if you're outdoors. I did notice, however, that the G1 isn't as deep and isn't as rich as the sound that you get out of the B10. It's a little bit tinny, you know, but for a microphone that's got no batteries, no cables, tiny, it's perfect for content creators who really don't want to be messing around with audio settings, just want to chuck a mic on and go. The G1. Next up and finally, we have the ECM W2BT. How cool is that? Nice little neat setup for a little set of lav mics. Now, these two sets here, we obviously have our transmitter and we have our receiver. Again, so we don't actually need any batteries or any cables for the receiver to sit on top of the camera. We do, however, need to charge up via a mini USB to the transmitter. So the transmitter is very, very simple. It's actually got a little clip on it, which is nice because you can literally just clip it onto, if I can do it onto a t-shirt, onto a shirt, and you can literally keep it there for when people are recording their audio. When you want quick little sound bites, when you want to do an interview, for example. So we can actually plug in our lav mic, so we can stick this, you know, on our back pocket, lav up under the shirt or wherever we want to lav up. And as you can see on here, we have our on off switch and we also have our attenuator, which allows us to basically reduce our decibels from zero. So we actually have quite a nice amount of control when it comes to the audio levels on this thing. Also, we've got our mic out on the receiver so we can essentially use these on any camera on any device which is really nice but obviously you're going to get the maximum use out of them when you actually add them onto a sony camera with those cheeky little connectors so without further ado let's give the w2bt a little run and see how it sounds not just in the studio but outside again let's go right so this is the w2bt obviously this beautiful little lav is absolutely brilliant for interviews when you know you quickly just want to clip on a mic just like you've got here to someone that you're recording or someone that you've just set up an interview for and we can obviously plug in our lav mic which obviously goes up your shirt and then it's hidden no one sees it mate comes with this cheeky little wind muff as well because obviously when you're outside and it's all windy and that you need a muff so let's stick this camera on a tree somewhere Let's get a bit of distance between us because I'm feeling a bit up in your grill and that. Right, nature Jimbo checking in. Um, let's get a bit of distance between us so that we can kind of, you know, test out the, the range on this thing. I'm not doing no couple of miles down the road or anything, mate. I'm not in the mood today. Obviously, the W2BT, um, good thing about this is you can literally be anywhere and record audio, just like a lav. You can shoot anyone. Like, you're in a, you know, you're at an event or you're shooting an interview of someone or you're shooting... Something with a bit of distance, mate, we can get good audio. Clip it on, good to go, mate. Or if you just want to get some sound bites off of lots of different people, clip this on them, boom, 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 ask them a few questions, they don't feel intimidated. Winner, winner. Hey, uh, one thing I do want to show you is how the wind muff clips on and off. That right there is a 3.5 mil jack, which goes into the lav mic jack. So cleanly, so neatly, it's probably like the best what are you doing? It's probably like the best wind muff system I've ever seen. So props for that, mate. So the W2BT has a battery life of up to nine hours on the transmitter. Obviously the receiver is constantly plugged into the camera, so it's constantly powered, but the actual transmitter has a battery life of up to nine hours. On a day shoot, like shooting interviews or an event, nine hours is pretty good. I don't really see you shooting for longer than that. So, oh yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention, let me stick the camera back down. You're literally on a log right now. One thing I did forget to mention is the fact that you can actually mix between receiving audio from the transmitter or from the actual receiver itself, or you can mix them both. So obviously right now it's coming from the transmitter. So let me whip it over to mix and then you can hear a bit of both. So right now you're listening to a mix of the receiver and the transmitter. So I can obviously do my thing, have a bit of a frolic and that, because I'm in the forest and I. And then I can obviously come over to the camera and I can speak into the actual receiver. So it's like a mix of both, it's pretty good. Obviously when you get a bit close, it gets a bit weird and that, but it's pretty cool if like someone's talking over there and someone's talking on camera. It's a nice little mix up. Cool mate, that's a stump and off. Do love me a good stump, I don't know why, but like all mossy. That's just a piece of art, mate. And for anyone who was wondering, this is what it sounds like directly into the Sony camera with, you know, just the internal mics on the Sony. So 
just for comparative reasons and that. So that is the ECM W2BT. Something I love about this mic is the fact that it's got a cheeky little 3.5 mil jack on the dead cat. So you literally just plug that in and it's honestly like one of the best little designs I've ever seen for a dead cat. It's so clean, it's so simple. And to be honest with you, it works really, really, really well. So that's good news. So let's have a cheeky little roundup of these three mics, see who's gonna benefit from them the most, where, you know, the best use cases for each one of these and where it could potentially fit in your roster. So to round up, there's obviously no one perfect bit of camera gear when it comes to any different camera department. Every single bit of gear has its own use case for certain scenarios. So the B10, in my opinion, the perfect high-end vloggers mic and really nice, well-controlled shotgun mic. Anyone who actually wants a lot of control over their audio, we've obviously got digital analog, we've obviously got all of them different directional settings so that we can really home in on the kind of audio that we wanna pick up. We've obviously got our different filters so we can actually cut out noise, and we've obviously got our audio levels on the back so that we can really have some fine control over our audio levels. The one downside I'd say about the B10 is the fact that you can only use it on Sony cameras. There isn't that mic out coming out of the microphone that you can obviously plug into other cameras, other systems, which isn't a problem for those of you that actually just shoot on Sony. Obviously, it's gonna work amazingly on a Sony camera, but I guess the only downside would be it can only be used on a Sony camera, which, as I say, if you do shoot Sony, it's not a problem. When it comes to the G1, the perfect little plug and play microphone. You don't have to do anything, you just whack it in. Spot on and perfect for those that are run and gun really, really fast. Content creators, people who are literally just making videos all day on the fly. Obviously it's got that mic out so that you can use it on different systems, different cameras. And the audio quality is great. It's obviously not as good as something like the B10. It is a little bit tinny. We don't really get them nice deep sounds that we get with the B10 and other high-end microphones. But for the size of this thing and how compact it is and how easy it is to use, no battery, no cables on a Sony camera, it really is the perfect little content creation masterpiece of a microphone. But as I say, you aren't gonna get the best quality out of this thing but it's a very, very nice little bit of kit to have in your camera bag. And finally, we've obviously got the W2BT. Amazing little lav set. Obviously, don't need any batteries for the receiver. Nine hours battery on the transmitter. We've obviously got them different gain functions. We've got that option to mix. Just have the mic, just have the receiver. So we've got lots of different options when it comes to what we're actually recording. Distance is great, and obviously there's no cables. None of these microphones have cables when you use a Sony camera. I think that is probably the biggest benefit because you don't have to be worrying about cables and batteries anymore. It's all here and you've got that really high-end audio quality. I personally can't see myself just using this clip-on mic without the lav. I would definitely be using the lav. I personally like to hide my mics. I don't like to see them in the frame, but if you're just trying to pick up little sound bites or you're shooting an event or if you're shooting interviews or you just need a decent wireless lav system, you really can't go wrong with this. It really is banging. Anyway, you lot, remember to keep an eye on Instagram because I am going to be giving away one of these microphones. And let me know in the comments what you lot think of these mics. Have Sony missed the mark? Or do you think Sony have got them absolutely spot on with these new connections? No cables, no batteries. I think they've absolutely smashed it and they've made a really nice variety when it comes to different mics for different scenarios. And as always, you lot, I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. Bosh. Oh,